Welcome Warrior community to this special live stream presentation from MCHS District 156. I am Carl Valianatos, Assistant Superintendent, and I will be your host tonight. I'm joined by the proud superintendent of District 156, Dr. Ryan McTagg, and our fine principal of East Campus, Dr. Jeff Prickett. We are very excited to share a glimpse of our collective futures with you tonight. At the end of the presentation, we will dedicate some time for some question and answers. Those of you who are watching via the district Facebook or the YouTube page can enter questions in the comments as you have them. We will try to entertain as many as we can tonight and we will produce an FAQ to share with our uh, stakeholders. And now without further ado, here's Dr. Ryan McTagg to kick off our presentation. All right, thank you, Carl. Good evening, everyone. It is a pleasure to have you with us tonight as we update you on some of the amazing construction throughout our district and our campus transition that will take place next fall as we move towards one comprehensive high school system with a freshman and an upper level campus. Now, when our community passed a referendum almost three years ago, we not only wanted to repair and replace our aging infrastructure, but we also wanted to transform how we deliver educational services to our students and improve equity, efficiency, and access to our amazing course pathways and programs and truly become one school, one community. And over the past two years, we've held countless user group meetings with multiple stakeholders to design and construct a comprehensive community high school that would meet all of our goals. And I'm happy to report that we are now nearing the end of this incredible journey. And we expect substantial completion for the Center of Science, Technology and Industry by the end of January on time and on budget. But I wanna go ahead and start with the improvements that we're making throughout our entire district, including the freshman campus. So about two years ago, uh, we knew that it wasn't just about building uh, you know, this beautiful new extension over at West Campus. We had to put some resources into um, restructuring the, the facilities and innovation and just renovating space inside East Campus, which is also gonna become our new freshman campus. And we started with really replacing the entire HVA system, right? All of the mechanical systems at East, East Campus with a geothermal well system, as well as adding LED lighting in every classroom, in every hallway, in every space, and of course, all of our classroom unit events. And we really focused on the classroom environment. We wanted to make sure that that was sound for all of our students. So we replaced those individual unit events, we added air ducts to increase airflow throughout the classroom, LED lighting, new ceiling and new flooring. Um, and that's again, in every single classroom at East Campus. Um, we also added that LED lighting in our gymnasiums throughout our campus. Um, and you know, soon this summer, what we're going to do is replace all of our lockers, all of our hallway flooring, replace some of our display cases with digital signage to make sure when our freshmen come in, uh, they also have something very special to look forward to. Uh, and that campus then is sustainable for many, many years to come. Now, I know that really the highlight of the build is the Center for Science, Technology and Industry. It's going to be a beautiful structure, 70,000 square feet. But we also have an additional probably 25, 30,000 square feet that we're renovating inside of West Campus, along with many other uh, improvements throughout the district and at West Campus itself. So I wanna start with something that happened this summer that was absolutely critical. And our school board made the decision to invest almost 8 million additional dollars, right, outside of the referendum into replacing all of the existing, in the existing building, mechanical systems and unit ventilators and air handlers, right, to do a complete overhaul. And part of the reason is we didn't want to have the new extension kind of running on, on newer equipment, newer systems, and have the existing campus running on older systems and really causing problems or having issues and not being able to talk to each other through an automated building system. And so I'm happy to report just like East Campus, all of those mechanical systems have been replaced and they will all operate on that one um, operating building system. And, and that's fantastic for our campus. Now also throughout our district, uh, we had to enlarge our district strength and conditioning room and we added field turf in that area uh, for all of the students, additional students coming over to West Campus. We added a new student parking lot uh, that was up and running last year, that was two years ago, uh, 10 brand new tennis courts, 
over two years refurbished our entire pool, um, both mechanically and then also with all new tile on the deck and the walls and the pool itself. And then over at McCracken, we actually had to replace all of our stadium lighting. Uh, we had eight poles there and about two of them didn't work and, and structurally they weren't sound. So we replaced those this summer for four new stadium lights along with uh, taking care of all the water issues that we had in the backfields and paving over all of that limestone that was there. You know, we also have a lot of innovation um, and we have a lot of renovations that we're doing uh, in the interior of the campus as we, we expand our space and prepare for, uh, you know, two, 300 more students coming over uh, from East Campus next year. And, and one area that we're focused on, some new areas that we're renovating is we're gonna create a brand new choir room for all of our choir students. We're gonna create a brand new art and photo laboratory for, for fine arts. Uh, and one of our crown jewels that we just approved uh, last month is our brand new college and career resource center that will not only house all of our counselors, but eventually a college resource counselor, our assistant principal, um, and it's going to be right outside the library there so all of our students can access that vital information they need as they move down that post-secondary pathway. So we're really happy to renovate those existing areas of our building. Now, of course, uh, over the past year and a half, especially this summer, uh, we've done some massive construction on our new 70,000 square foot Center for Science, Technology and Industry. Really the goal over the past eight months, I would say, is building that shell uh, to get us ready for the winter where we could start working on the interior of the building. And you can see right now that we're starting to go ahead with the drywall, all of the mechanical systems are in. We've actually started painting. We're adding some of the technology and all of the wiring. Obviously you're seeing the windows that, that have gone up from the outside. Uh, and really we're starting to really focus on the inside now that we have that complete shell. Uh, and that's pretty amazing. So we're just going to take you through a, a quick drone footage. You can see, obviously, it's shelled in now. We're working on it. We're so happy with the results at this point. I think the most important thing I can say about the most innovative of Illinois, the most for the future, all right? It was designed And I, I think what you'll find and, and, and what's most interesting about this is that we're so lucky that we had all of these pathways to begin with, all right? And, and so when we built these lab spaces, all right, uh, for science, for uh, uh, engineering, for manufacturing, Right, those pathways existed, and our teachers built the laboratories and built the classroom space that was really going to serve our students the very best. All right, on the on the first floor there, what you're going to see <laughs> on the first floor there, what you're going to find uh, is all of our kind of manufacturing, technology, engineering. On the second floor, you see our science classes. And then up on the third floor, we'll have our math classes. Um, so truly innovative design. And uh, we're so excited to see that begin to move to fruition. Um, and, and I just want to say that it, it really is truly amazing that we've been able to achieve all of our goals. Uh, we've been able to repair our aging infrastructure here with that mid-level referendum and some contributions. Um, you know, from our board and our fund balance to really modernize our educational environment. We're providing all students and families in McHenry with the same shared educational experience and access to the vital courses and the programs that they need to be successful in the future. But most important, and this is critical, that we've placed our district on a secure and sustainable pathway forward that's gonna allow for that continued financial stability, that continued investment in our buildings and our courses and our teachers and our students, all for the foreseeable future. The idea that right now as a district, given the, the current condition of education and where we are with, with state funding, that we're gonna have 95% of all of our mechanical systems replaced in this district so that we are on a sustainable future where we can continue to invest right, in our school community is absolutely amazing. 
So I'm proud that we've achieved those goals. I'm proud that we're on that pathway to, to realizing this dream uh, with all of these many construction projects to better serve our community and our students. And with that, I now get to turn it over to Dr. Prickett, who's gonna discuss our, our transition into our freshman at Upper Campus, and I will uh, turn it over to him, so thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. McTagg, Mr. Valianatos. I am Jeff Prickett, principal here at McHenry High School. I'm so glad to be with you tonight, so glad to see that so many of you turned out for tonight to see this rebranding of our district. So one of the most important things that we have wanted to address is the equity and efficiency in the district of, of trying to maintain two comprehensive high schools on either side of town, where we found that, of course, as you know, students were forced to take certain classes, um, some of them just because of the side of town that they lived on, uh, that classes were housed in two buildings. It put a strain on our transportation system, of course, because we had to transport kids back and forth in between uh, every single period of the day. And uh, there were differing opportunities between the campuses simply due to sheer size. Um, so with this, we have one comprehensive high school with a freshman campus and an upper campus. We have streamlined course pathways. All students have equal access and a very intentional design to create these modern learning spaces at both campuses for, the, for our students. Part of what we what we did was uh, at the very beginning was to take some school visits. We went out to the Nequa Valley Freshman Center and really learned from them. We went to the New Trier Freshman Campus. Both of these high schools have freshman campuses uh, in addition to an upper campus. So we met with the leaders there at the high schools. We met with teachers. We met with students. Uh, they were gracious enough with their time. Um, that we met with the superintendents uh, to learn really from them. Not so much that we could replicate what they were doing because we always wanted to make sure that we do things the McHenry way here as warriors, but just to learn what worked, what didn't work from them, and to really uh, look at um, just making sure that we could sustain this for our future. Um, we learned a lot about what you can see there in the center there, the power of the freshman year and how critical that was and how very intentional we can be focusing on the power of the freshman year within a freshman campus. Mr. Bernados? Yes, Dr. Prickett. And, you know, two years ago when we started this process, we intentionally went to these, uh, these model schools and we went there several times and really compared and we contrasted um, their approaches that were in, in many ways very similar, but in other ways, there were definitely two flavors. Um, and we came away with some very, very clear uh, conclusions. Um, one is that both Niqua and Nutrier said that they trace their educational uh, success back to when they started to focus on their freshmen at a freshman campus. And we all went into this with this idea as well that it really starts with success of the freshman year. Um, both systems had great systems of supports for ninth graders, which we have uh, taken many ideas to try to emulate. Both systems uh, really emphasize the importance of senior mentorship, being able to get your seniors in close proximity quite often with your freshmen to mentor them and to help grow them into um, 10th graders. Um, both of them emphasize student activities as part of the bridging process that Dr. Prickett will talk about here in a few minutes, that process of going from ninth grade to 10th grade. Um, the two systems did have a little bit different approach to school structure, and we walked away and it was very, very clear um, that the one principal model that we saw at Nequa Valley High School, where there was one principal over their two campuses, they, there was just this incredible feeling of they, that they had one staff, one community, one aligned vision and goal, which has really uh, driven us ever since. And with that, um, you, may, uh, you may have heard over the last couple of months that Dr. Prickett has been announced that he will be the principal of McHenry High School in our new one uh, school, one principal model. So he's gonna talk about the administrative and support structure. Yeah, thank you, Mr. V. I'm, I'm super humbled and, and proud to be able to uh, serve the community in this capacity as the principal here at McHenry High School. And to that end, we wanted to make sure that um, we had 
we make sure that everybody knows the systems of support that we have at each campus. And so at the freshman campus, um, we will have uh, Mrs. Hobson. She will be the associate principal here on the ground running the day-to-day -day operations at the freshman campus, along with a dean of students to be named later. Um, we also, at the upper campus, we will have three uh, um, assistant principals, uh, associate and or assistant principals, and two deans of students over at the upper campus uh, to be able to maintain and support those systems there, the, the students there, the teachers there at the upper campus. Also at each school, at, at the freshman campus and the upper campus, and indeed at each grade level, we will have a student services department made up of counselors, of social workers, of psychologists to be able to support each grade level. And, and those students. Um, so we're very excited we, uh, about this structure. We know that this structure will provide the supports necessary to provide the resources necessary um, at, at each campus. And so there's your administrative structure as we look forward to the future. We, we really spent a lot of time, as Mr. Valinato mentioned, really looking at the terms that we are going to be going to be using moving forward. Uh, everything from from you know really not calling East Campus East Campus anymore, but making sure that we name it the Freshman Campus. And same goes for uh, the the West Side of Town, West Campus, making sure that we're calling that the Upper Campus because this is one comprehensive high school, um, just with housing all freshmen here and all the upper students at the upper level. So there you see the upper campus and freshman campus. We really talked about, I, I mentioned to you that intentional design, uh, starting with our instructional philosophy in mind and spending a lot of time with our department chairs, our, our division chairs um, with curriculum um, and making sure that the philosophy drove the design. OK, um, we really are built for the future of student engagement with flexible classrooms, with modern learning spaces. We have, as Dr. McTagg showed you, the, the, the College and Career Center that will be the hub of our college and career pathways where students will learn about the pathways. They will learn about the structures and, and really decide what they want to do with their future. Um, we encourage leadership and action. So those our senior mentors uh, will be over at the, the freshman campus. Um, um, and our freshmen will spend a lot of time at the upper campus really to learn about all the opportunities and activities that we have at the high school level. Uh, we talk about, Mr. Vellinatos mentioned, the eighth to ninth grade transition. So that starts early. I'm gonna get into that in a couple of minutes here. Um, so when we talk about transition, we mean from the middle school level to the freshman campus, and then bridging really gets after that meaning of the ninth grade to 10th grade. So how do we bridge that gap between the freshman campus and the 10th grade level and, and beyond really at the upper campus? And that's why uh, we're going to spend a lot of time making sure that those kids, the, the ninth grade students spend time at the upper campus. To, so when they're ready to move, that bridge is seamless and, and um, there, they really know and understand what it means to be a warrior. I'm going to talk just a little bit about our uh, daily schedule. The concept of it, it was designed very purposefully. Um, we spent, uh, we had quite a lot of committees that uh, were formed throughout the last two years of our research and development process. And about the first nine months, we spent a lot of time just talking and thinking about our daily schedule and what that was going to look look like. We were really delighted to see that when we went to both Nequa Valley and New Trier, they had a schedule that was almost identical to ours already. So we really started to look at our schedule and how do we need to tweak our, our schedule to make it work maybe just a little bit better for this new structure. Um, the upper campus and the freshman campus are going to continue to have a staggered time. Um, all of these times are tentative. We're still working on the exact start times, but the upper campus is going to be the campus that's a little later. The freshman campus is gonna start just a little earlier. You'll notice though that AIM will fall into different places and there's a really a specific reason for that. In the morning, um, that leadership in action class that Dr. Prickett talked about, those seniors are now uh, several days a week are going to be able to be at the freshman campus, actually working with freshmen in AIM as part of their first period class. Um, those upper campus students will also be able to take zero hour, which is gonna start just a little later, but they'll also be able to enjoy their AIM period, which is gonna fall later in the day. At the end of the day, students at the freshman campus 
will get out just a little bit earlier and then we'll be able to go to the upper campus to participate in clubs and activities and sports and um, really enjoy that as part of their bridging process. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. V. I think it's really critical that we are focusing on those extra opportunities um, that we will be able to provide through that senior, le senior leader mentoring during that AIM time. And at the end of the day, time for those kids to get over to the upper campus to participate in all the activities that we will have to offer them at the upper campus. I think wherever we can uh, find ways to bring our freshmen over to the main campus, whether it's activities or assemblies or events, you know, that's really our, our strong desire so that we really do feel like that one comprehensive school community. So the transition process really begins the winter of eighth grade. We are already beginning to talk about our conversations coming up with our feeder districts, Harrison 36, McHenry District 15, and the Montini and Montini School as well. Uh, talking about course selection, uh, the placement orientations, our summer school get ahead program and why that's so critical. And really those first steps into the high school of meeting new classmates and, and focusing on success from day one. So that transition from middle school into the freshman campus is so critical for us. And, and, for, and we, we know that you all understand that, how critical that is. And we're, so, we're just excited that, that these freshmen are gonna be in the same building all together, learning about that warrior culture, what that means to be a warrior through all the opportunities and intentional activities and things that we have planned for them here at the freshman campus, as well as meeting their senior mentors and getting over to the upper campus uh, within that same year to understand really what, again, what that means to be a warrior. That's so critical. All of the traditions that they will begin right here during their freshman year, all of those ceremonies, all of those rituals that begin here to understand one school, one goal. Um, one of the roles that I play uh, during the presentation tonight is to talk a little bit about the curriculum that will happen at both campuses. And uh, one of the subtle points that Dr. McTagg uh, made earlier in the presentation is that we're not building and making all of these changes and then have to advance our uh, change and modify our curriculum. We have spent the last six or seven years revamping and modernizing our entire curriculum. So our pathways of college and career are all built out. So making the transition now to a freshman and upper campus is relatively easy. Um, at the, from a curriculum standpoint, at the freshman campus, all of our ninth graders are going to have access to regular and honors core courses, um, their first AP um, human geography course, their first AP course. Our ninth grade uh, now in physical education is gonna have the entire facility space, including more physical education choices, they're going to have the full complement of languages, introductory art, freshman music, and all of our career pathway electives that are really, really amazing. For biomedical science, computer science, engineering, journalism, power mechanics, woods, metals one, introduction courses in business, computer literacy, introduction to foods, and child development. So our ninth graders are gonna have access to the entry level of all of these amazing pathways and the ability to work with senior leaders in the AIM period. We spent a lot of time in addition to the upper campus and really thinking about modernized spaces in looking at the freshman campus as well. Uh, a redesigned media center for those of you who went to school here um, at East Campus a couple of years, last summer, we finalized the media center um, and looking at soft spaces for collaboration. It's a completely new media center, um, but, but also soft spaces for collaboration throughout the hallways, um, improved classroom environments with flooring and lighting, new lockers that we're looking at currently, uh, and digital, digital signage that we're actually looking at uh, in, in getting installed currently uh, th this school year. Um, so that we can really focus on those learning spaces here at the freshman campus. So uh, we, we mentioned um, the very first day when students walk in the door of the freshman campus, focusing on the freshman year and how critical it is, starting with success. 
We have a Distinguished Warrior program here, a graduate program here in the district for the last number of years. Um, and what we are going to do is really focus on, for the freshmen, six credits and six hours. Six credits to graduate, to be on track to graduate by the end of their senior year. Six hours of community service to go towards the 25 hours that are needed to get Distinguished Warrior status. Being involved in academics, athletics and activities, those three A's that you see there, in order to be distinguished. That's what we're focusing on at the freshman level for our Distinguished Warrior Graduate Program is being distinguished. And how do you do that? By focusing on those few things in order to be on track, not only to graduate, not only to, to get that Distinguished Warrior status, but also to be high school and life ready. Um, one of the important things that we noticed right away when we went on our early site visits is these model schools, and, and we see this in the research as well, had particular support and action teams solely focused on success of ninth graders. So last year, uh, we implemented that at both McHenry West and McHenry East, um, a ninth grade success team. And we really wanted to uh, improve our data on the school report card metric of ninth grade on track. And we were at 88.6, and this was uh, in 2019. So this ninth grade success team made up of our principals and our academic teachers and counselors really is an action team, used eighth grade data, used early ninth grade data to intervene as soon as we could when we found students were struggling. And it's really a problem solving team. And at the end of last year, we had such great success. We saw in our school report card, um, our freshman on track rate rose nearly 7%. So we were really um, overwhelmed by the success of our ninth grade um, success team. And we we're excited that next year we will have a ninth grade success team at, at uh, the freshman campus and a 10th grade success team at the upper campus. Absolutely. When we talk about bridging, again, this is the bridge from the freshman campus to the upper campus. And again, this process begins early in the ninth grade year as we look at ninth to 10th grade growth. We focus on senior mentorship, all of the extracurricular activities that will be offered to our kids. The students really begin to look at a four-year high school planning. They really start that freshman year, but they really, once they get to the upper campus, they really dig in and look at their intentional course selection and uh, the, their placement through the use of orientations and really understanding what um, those college and career pathways are so that by the time they are in 10th grade, they have a really solid understanding of where, where, where they would like to be and what they would like to explore. And that's where they come to enjoy a very advanced curriculum, where they can start to matriculate up those college and career pathways as, as they start to pin down exactly what they want to focus on and study for their future. Uh, in the upper campus and uh, MCHS in general, we have 40 advanced placement or dual credit courses, opportunities for students to earn early college credit. All of our pathways and courses are going to have advanced, um, advanced equipment, um, state-of-the-art resources, our upper-level world language, focusing on our Seal of Biliteracy uh, Award that the Illinois um, State of Illinois gives out, uh, the upper-level art and music courses, and all of our advanced pathway electives. You see um, quite a few of the different um, pieces of equipment and examples of our capstone, uh, capstone experiences in biomed, computer science, engineering, uh, manufacturing, construction, and graphics, journalism and newspaper, and uh, the business entrepreneurial course, as well as Warrior Chef. To really, really get at the intentional design and purpose, we, we look at the cl at collaborative design. So you, what you can see here will be 35 learning spaces, including nine math classrooms, 12 science classrooms and labs, a greenhouse, and an outside eco deck for experimentation at the upper campus. Advanced learning spaces, modern and accessible to all. So here what you are seeing is a, is a drawing, a rendering of the biomedical science lab and an actual photo of recent progress. 
the advanced engineering lab again a rendering of what we wanted to look wanted it to look like with our architects and a recent photo probably just this past week of that advanced engineering lab as it looks right now and one of the things uh two of the things that we are very very committed to and you see right in the intentional design of this this new center right in the center of the 200 the the ground floor of this building we will have an advanced manufacturing and construction and building trades laboratories each of them about 3500 square feet of some of the most advanced uh modern equipment brand new um, so that we can continue to commit to um, not just college but also career um, career avenues and that we can provide for our students and uh, um, their future aspirations. But again, we can't stress enough that, that all of those areas that you're seeing were really designed by our teachers with pathways, fully developed pathways, so that um, they are truly strategic and intentional uh, to build the very best lab space and classrooms designed to help our students be successful. And, you know, we can't thank our teachers and all those user groups enough right now. I just want to throw that in there um, because uh, they really are truly making this project uh, turn out as incredible and on budget and on time uh, with all of the innovation that we need uh, for our kids to have a really bright future. Yep. And very intentional to have math and science and CTE integrated into the same building. It's amazing. Um, as, as many of your students are coming home and talking about course selection, they're probably going to be talking to you about the expansion of blended learning in District 156. And I think this really speaks to how the building and all of our internal improvements really are focused. Um, just I want to say just a few words about blended learning for those of you who may not um, might be unfamiliar with the term. Um, really before pandemic, okay, we're not talking about digital remote learning um, like we have going on right now. Before pandemic, we had 15 blended learning courses at McHenry High School, and those courses mixed both in-person, in-class, face-to-face learning with some days of virtual out-of-class learning. And there are many, many benefits from motivation to teachers and students be able to um, use their time more efficiently, teachers to be able to focus on students that need more attention to develop skills. This is just a, a, a list. Um, next year, when school opens and as your students are coming home, choosing their courses over the next couple of months, we're going to be offering from 15 to now 52 blended learning courses. Most of them are only going to be blended learning courses. Only nine of them are also going to be offered traditionally. So you, uh, parents and your students, will be hearing more and more about blended learning at McHenry High School. And, you know, Carl, I just want to mention, too, with, with our blended program that you had down, the, uh, if, if you saw the bottom, the, you know, the, for the, the programs for the future, the, the courses for the future. And I just think it's so important to say that, you know, we didn't build and construct all of uh, these different innovative spaces uh, for just today. We built them for tomorrow, for the courses and the classes of tomorrow and how, you know, our teachers will instruct, you know, 10 years down the road. And we intentionally built this structure to have those collaborative spaces so they can engage in blended learning. And I know that right now we're in a difficult time with digital learning, but eventually we're going to come back in a hybrid model. And we've really constructed our hybrid model to mimic what a blended environment or a blended class is going to look like in the future that our students will be able to access, uh, you know, moving forward for, for, for many, many years to come. And so uh, although we're in a difficult time, we continue to innovate and we continue to model, especially with that hybrid approach that we'll be taking hopefully January 20th um, of, of what classes may look like in the future here uh, for our students to be able to access. In the end, we are really excited and looking forward to a rebranding for the future of McHenry Community High School. We've never seen anything like this, and we are so thrilled to be able to continue to talk about and learn um, and, and continue to repeat that one school, one goal, warrior ready. So we end tonight just about with four pillars, transition, mission, culture, and position.
transition, meaning a successful transition, not in, not only into this one high school, one principal model, but a successful yearly transition of our incoming freshmen every single year so that they really understand um, the power of this community high school. That's transition. Mission, really getting involved and clear on what our mission, vision, our values, beliefs, and commitments are through really taking a deep dive into what a, what a graduate will look like out of McHenry Community High School in four years. That's mission. Culture, what does it mean to be a warrior with every student connected to one another through classroom activities, athletics, and clubs, and those, those rituals and, and ceremonies that we will be undertaking here at the freshman campus to really kick off their four year high school career, that culture of being a warrior. And finally, position, meaning all students will be warrior ready and will be able to meet graduation requirements and be ready for life after high school, ready for the larger world. That's the position that we will be in after these four years. Thank you, Dr. Prickett, for that review. And uh, as, as we head towards our Q&A session, um, just want to throw these two very, very crucially important events out there for all of the incoming and current students. Um, in these strange times, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have in-person live orientation events with lots and lots of people uh, in February and March. But what we are going to do is we're going to have very important live stream orientation events uh, for orientation and course uh, course selection. So for those incoming eighth grade students, we have the eighth grade extravaganza night on February 11th at 7 p.m. That's gonna be a virtual live stream event um, with some incredibly important information uh, geared towards our eighth graders uh, who are gonna be going to that freshman campus next year. And then the Warriors Rising event is going to be on March 11th, 7 p.m. This is going to be the first year and the last year where so many students are going to go to a new school next year. All of those East Campus uh, students are going to go to a new school next year, and all of those 10th graders are going to be um, at the upper campus together. So that's going to be a really, really important event for all of our current students to really take in. So mark your calendars for these very, very important orientation events. And uh, right now, I'm going to just flip over to this other screen, and I'm going to look at um, some of the questions that we can um, ask Dr. McTagg and Dr. Prickett. Um, here's a question. Um, Dr. Prickett, will freshmen have access to honors geometry if they place into that sophomore level course? Do you want to take that or? Uh, oh, go ahead. I mean, the answer is the answer is yes, Mr. Valianos. Yep. So, absolutely. And we'll also house that at the freshman campus. They won't have to travel to yep. the to the main campus to access that course. So, in addition to all of those uh, entry level uh, options that that uh, Mr. Valianos talked about, um, we're going to offer those like honors geometry. Uh, you know, or AP freshman experiences. We're going to offer those at the freshman campus um, so that kids don't have to travel back and forth, our freshmen. Um, We're trying to eliminate as much travel as possible. We don't want to see yeah. you know, 45, 60 shuttle buses uh, because we know that that's where it, it made our scheduling rather convoluted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Here's a question from Deb H. And uh, this is this is definitely not the case. Uh, students are going through the course of selection process with their teachers right now. And in fact, they're not choosing. Their teachers are actually talking with them about what are the most appropriate courses. And yes, you are correct that um, the course selection is actually going to take place in January and February. So that is that is not correct. They're just working with their teachers on um, the appropriate leveled courses for next year. Um, here's a question. College level courses are offered blended and um, or online. In fact, um, if I go back to the um, most of the college level courses, particularly in English, many of them are being offered blended. Um, and not completely online, but that is a mixture of both. 
traditional and in class and uh, digital um, digital learning. And we're rolling out our blended program with fidelity, and we you know we want to make sure that that those classes are are rigorous and that they have all the components that they need. Um, but I think you're exactly right, making sure that we offer those upper level classes too in a blended format as we continue to roll out the uh, you know the the pathways is incredibly important. Uh, and we'll get there. We're not going to roll out everything at once, but um, I know that all of those upper level courses are are on the you know, on the docket here to, to begin moving forward in a blended yep. environment. Um, here's a good question for uh, Dr. McTagg and Dr. Prickett about the additional students at the upper campus for lunch and how we will accommodate them. Go, go ahead, Dr. McTagg. I mean, one of the things that we've been looking at um, to accommodate the additional students at Upper Campus for lunch is as we did this past year before we went into, um, you know, before the pandemic really took off was to allow students who met criteria um, our upperclassmen to leave campus for lunch, which really, uh, which really allowed for more space in the cafeteria. Um, so they, they went there to local establishments to, to, to grab lunch, and that really um, freed up a lot of the space in our cafeterias at both, on both sides of town. You know, we also have a, a pretty large commons area there um, at, uh, at West Campus. Um, obviously, open campus is going, going to help. Uh, we're also looking at some of the restructuring of the, the cafeteria itself. Uh, we do have multiple lunch periods to spread things out, uh, but we think we'll have enough areas to be able to accommodate everyone that needs lunch. Um, here's another question. Um, still asking about, you know, wanting to learn a little bit more about what that distinguished student is, Dr. Prickett. Very exciting stuff. Absolutely. And so I saw a previous question come through earlier tonight. Uh, someone wondering if you had to be an athlete in order to be a distinguished warrior graduate. And the answer is no to that. Um, you, you do have to have either three seasonal sports or a year long activity be involved in that. Uh, you can't you, you have to have um, at least 90 per 90, 95 percent attendance um, during the pandemic right now, because we still have the Distinguished Warrior Graduate Program, uh, we've waived the attendance criteria. But as soon as we're able to come back to in-person learning, we, that will be back. Um, we do have uh, a requirement of 25 community service hours over the course of their four years. Um, and so and this is how these, those are just some of the ways that you can get distinguished warrior status in addition to uh, certain criteria uh, from your SAT test and, and um, yeah, it's exciting. And then here's this last question uh, for tonight. I'll go ahead and I'll take that one. Is band going to be um, all at East Campus next year? In fact, the answer to that question uh, for both band and choir is no. There will be a freshman band and a freshman choir. And then at the upper level, uh, upper campus, there will be the upper level bands. And uh, uh, as Dr. McTagg talked about earlier, there will be very little traveling uh, because of the efficiencies um, that we're trying to garner in the students not having to travel back and forth um, with our campuses. And part of this, the reason is why we had to build that choir room so that we could have a, uh, a band room and a choir room for all of our upper level students to be able to uh, spread them out. All right. So um, that is about all the time we have uh, for tonight. We really appreciate everyone uh, joining us. We thank you. Um, nothing is more important right now than us being able to uh, bring to you all of these exciting changes as we start to plan for next year. So we look forward to all of our students and parents turning in, uh, tuning in to our live streaming orientation events in February and March. And we wish all of you a very happy holidays and, uh, and be safe. Dr. McTagg, Dr. Prickett, anything to add before we close? No, I just appreciate everyone coming out tonight. It's very exciting. We are going to be looking through uh, a lot of these questions and answers here tonight and really, really provide a, an FAQ, you know, as, as the questions keep rolling in. So, um, and Callahan family, I miss you too. <laughs> you know, I just, I just want to close with, uh, hopefully after you've seen this presentation, you, you, you really get a sense that the future is incredibly bright for our district. We have so much to look forward to and the very best is yet to come. 
Um, and, and this is challenging times and there's been a lot of adversity, but I hope you can see that as a district, we continue to press forward uh, so that we can really realize the, the, the school of our dreams and the school of tomorrow. Uh, we are well on the road, make no mistake, to becoming one of the most comprehensive, one of the most competitive districts in the area and in the state. Uh, and I know we're going to make you very, very proud. Um, I definitely want to thank our entire school community. We have to thank our entire school community, our parents, our students, our teachers, our staff, everybody, our administrators um, who have worked so hard, so hard um, as we continue to build uh, this, this incredible school system um, as we begin our transition next year. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the time. We'll continue to answer your questions. We're always available to you anytime you need us. I ask that you all keep the faith uh, I have hope that we're going to return in that hybrid model second semester. Um, and I wish you all the very best. Have a, a very happy and, and safe holiday. Take Thank care, everyone. Thank you very Thank much. You everyone.